Hello everyone with us here today from BlackBerrys.com. Uh, we are at BlackBerry Jam Americas 2012 and I'm with, here with SVP uh, Sebastian Marino Mess and uh, we're going to talk a little bit today uh, a little bit about what he does. Um, you can go ahead and start it off. Uh, sure. Well, why don't you tell the viewers? Yeah, sure. First, you know, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I hope you're having a good show. Yes, it's pretty awesome. Definitely Isn't awesome. It? Yes, a lot it of is. stuff going on. A lot of energy, a lot of cool things that we're, we're showing. Very show. much, yeah. very much. Yeah. So, so let's, uh, I mean, I think one of the things you wanted to talk about is just the, I think the history of Kinex, RIM, BlackBerry OS. Yeah, why don't we do that? Why don't, you do, why don't you just go ahead and tell everybody, start off and just say, you know, kind of what you do so they have an idea. I know you're kind of one of those guys that's kind of, you're, you're, you're major. A lot of people don't, you know, might not necessarily know you, but... You know, but you have such a big part to do with the company and the history in Cunix and, uh, and and now with the BlackBerry OS since you've been brought on, you know, with BlackBerry and RIM. So why don't you tell everybody just real quickly what you do and, sure. uh, and then we'll go from there. Sure. So I came up through the Cunix acquisition. I've been working at Cunix and RIM for uh, actually 14 years, over 14 years now. Um, and did, you know, Cunix engineering. I was responsible for engineering at, uh, at Cunix when we were acquired uh, by REM. That was in uh, April, actually June uh, 2010. And, uh, you know, since then, obviously, we've had this marriage of, you know, Cunix, REM, and other acquisitions that, uh, that REM has made. And uh, that's uh, been the foundation for BlackBerry 10. So the part that I'm responsible for now is the, what we call BlackBerry OS. Yes. Great name, great name, <laughs> great name, and if you notice here, this fine young man is wearing this shirt. I mean, it just looks so much better on him than it does me. So I'm sorry. <laughs> so um, and that's really, I mean, when you when you think about it, it's really all of the like the core operating system, a lot of the you know the headless pieces that are that are somewhat invisible in the system that mm -hmm. kind of power uh, the entire device. And then we have another group that's responsible for applications, cascades, UI, mm -hmm. um, and so on. And you're 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 like a, a visionary. I like to say. I talked to you a little bit earlier at the event, me and you, and uh, you were at Mobilize last week, right, San yeah. Francisco. I know you're there with some of the other guys, and you were kind of. I read a few articles about it, and you were talking about integration in BlackBerry. So you mentioned something about a swimming. It was insane. Something about like a your swimming pool heater and the refrigerator and everything. Knowing with your device and working all in tow with each other, and you know, just just uh, that type of integration level integration for people. Why don't you just kind of brush on that a little bit for us? Sure. I know it's a huge topic. Uh, what do you think about it? Like what? Yeah. So, well, the first thing I'll say is I have a great team that works with me. So you know, the I can't take credit for all of the ideas. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think you know part of the vision that we're that we're really pushing when we talk about mobile computing, it's really about you know. I like to call it ubiquitous computing, you know, computers that surround you, not just your handset, but things like cars, and you, you talk about refrigerators, like yeah. home control, medical devices, you name it. Having them, you know, they're all running really complex software, and we want them to fully integrate together, right? So, so what you really want as an experience is like this seamless life where you don't have to, when you're in your car, you don't actually have to pull your, your handset, like your cell phone. Mm -hmm. and actually look up the address of where you're going and type it back into your car, right? You want those computers to all talk to each other and kind of make it completely seamless, like basically invisible, right? so that it's, it becomes unconscious, they just work for you. And right. that's really one of the, the big things that we were talking about last week, you know, what are the steps that are needed as an industry to achieve that? And a lot of it is more about how you get, it's less about the technology that you need, and it's more about how you get standards that allow all these devices to right. communicate smartly. And we talked about also, you know, in, the, in, in this idea, you know, because you have BlackBerry, you have Android, you have Apple, you have all these, you know, uh, Microsoft. So, so you know, who, who ends up trying to set the standard? Does everybody have to agree or do you just, you know, kind of tree out on your own there? You know, how do you... I, I think, you know, I think if we really want to achieve this vision, this ubiquitous computing vision where everything works together, you have to recognize that it's, it's a heterogeneous world. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not going to be one player that basically has hardware and software that runs on every computer that you own. Like Apple's never going to go and build a car, for example. Right. Right. So you have to accept that it's going to be, you know, there's going to be different software platforms right. and the standards have to transcend that. Right. So which really means it can't be one company pushing it. It has to be like in the same way that the World Wide Web is, 
is run by W3C, mm -hmm. which is an independent organization. I think you need the same to apply to you know interoperability between devices. Right, and and almost it seems like as you know, Cunix is is so everybody knows that you know you're into the medical already. You're into a lot of these areas already. So you know why not have BlackBerry be the the, the, <laughs> the platform one, everywhere? The platform that's that right. sets it up that everywhere. You know, which is great. You know, I think that's awesome. Um, I also want to ask you about, uh, you were talking about the iPhone like being too close and Android being too open to, to achieve different levels of integration that right. you know, they might be able, you know, be able to, to catch this. And uh, what would you tell people that are on the fence about you know, BlackBerry right now? What would you tell them um, about BlackBerry 10 in regards to why it would be the best platform to choose over the others? So I think if you look at, uh, so my comment around close and open was really in the context of this ubiquitous computing, uh -huh. right? If you want to achieve yeah, this, yeah. this vision. The integration, yeah, That's you were right. just expanding on that. Yeah. yeah, like Apple is really close, so their devices work together, but they don't really work very well with the rest of the ecosystem. Right. Android is actually very open, which is great for innovation, but it causes so much fragmentation that uh -huh. it's hard to even create an app that runs on every Android device, let alone having it integrate with the rest of the world, right? right. Because it's so fragmented. Right. Uh, when I think of BlackBerry 10, we've done a few things in the in the platform. One of it is we're really big believers in open standards, and the second is if if you look at the developer communities that we're embracing, mm -hmm. you know, we have support for Cascades, Qt, C++. We have support for Web. We have support for Air. We have support for Android development. So really embracing these different developer communities mm -hmm. to bring applications to the yeah. platform. And that's choice. And that's when we're here with the, the, the developer event, you know, and that's awesome. You know, yeah. it's a, it's been. Uh, I've seen it expand. The websites have changed. You know, they've been. You know, everything's been great in far as that aspect goes. And uh, yeah, that's super awesome. Yeah. Um, I think another point. You know, when you when you say why would you choose BlackBerry Ten, I think the other focus that you've seen mm -hmm. is really around the experience. Right. If you look at BlackBerry Ten and the reinvention of <laughs> right. the user interface, the navigation paradigm, flow the hub and right. so on. That's really, I think, one of the key things. Right. Like the key innovations that we're really bringing to. Uh, Right. With BlackBerry 10. I'm just going to show everybody here real quick. I got my Dev Alpha A device. So I was messing around with that. Super awesome. And uh, I love how you guys released so much, you know, to the developer That's community, right. the API access, to giving people BBM. I know, I know there's some people who have already 20, 30, 40, 50 contacts, you know, and they're just ready to rock with it and it, a lot of excitement. Um, I think you know again it shows it shows our commitment to the developer community. Oh, it does big right. time. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate that definitely. Um, let's go to the next question. Uh, I wanted to ask you. Uh, I heard you you have some sight on NFC, maybe some different views on N NFC. What do you think about it? You know, we got it in BlackBerry ten. Um, what do you think about NFC? Um, and do you think that's where we need to go, or do you think that's where we need to stop with NFC? Do you think there's something else out there that's going to replace it? Um, I actually, I'm, I think it has its place, Yeah. right? Um, I think you're going to see a lot of apps being built on top of NFC going forward. Um, I think there will be, a, you know, other ways to <coughs> like other ways to basically connect devices and mm -hmm. uh, establish a relationship between them that will go beyond NFC. So I think NFC is one of the mechanisms. You, like maybe a step along the way? It's a step along <coughs> the way. Um, you know, will it be used for payments? Sure. Like there's mm -hmm. a range of, of applications for NFC. Yeah. Um, if you think of you know using NFC to you know tap and transfer contacts or create yeah. a, a relationship with someone, that's a great mechanism. Yeah. I think we'll you know we'll continue to see other ones. So going back to this integration now, you know we talked about just you know a couple questions ago. So you think NFC, you know that's kind of a step along the way, and then there would be something else that would be able to compile all this integration together. And like I think ultimately. If you go to the end state, and it may take us many years to get there yeah. as an industry, you're you know you're not going to want to actually have to use NFC to tap like when you get into your house to basically get your <laughs> get, you know yeah. get your home panel to recognize you right. You're yeah. going to want to you're going to want this network of computers to just actually know that you drove up in the driveway and it's you that's going into the house and it can turn off the alarm system. On so, its own. so maybe like a GPS type thing or some kind of something the, you know. Right, like the, like the reality is when you're in your car. You know your car knows where you are, uh -huh. and your your smartphone knows where you are, yeah, and it typically point. knows who you are. Yeah. So why not use you know all of that information smartly? Yeah, that's a great point. So, but it may take us as an industry to get everything integrated and everything working. It may take us, a, you know, it will take us a few years. Okay. And I'm sure we'll invent you know, a lot of other things along the way. Yeah, and we're excited that we're going to be along for the ride. So, 
Let's go ahead and wrap it up. I want Great. to thank you, Sebastian, for being with us today. Um, I appreciate it. It's my pleasure. And this has thank been you. Joe with BlackBerryOS.com. Uh, thanks for listening in, and we'll see you guys more at the event.